India has often been described as a story of poverty in the midst of plenty. Although India is rich in natural resources, there is no linkage between man and these resources, resulting in their improper management. This is a possible face of rural India. So unlike the sights of despair in many parts of the country. But change is only possible if we open our eyes to reality and brush aside the cobwebs of traditional thinking. The BAIF Development Research Foundation is a pioneering institution which has reached out to 8,000 villages in five states. The key to its success lies in its principles, principles which are markedly different from conventional concepts of development. And this is the man who inspired that change, Dr. Manipai Desai, the founder of BAIF. There's a very holistic approach to development. My idea of development is investment in man. Development is the human development, the family development, the development of the person. If you don't do that, all other infrastructure developments are of no use. The person behind or person utilizing the development process is very crucial. Considering the family as a basic unit rather than the village as a whole is one of the key strategic concepts. Every village is heterogeneous. On an average, only 12% of the villagers are really well-to-do. They occupy important positions, both financial and political. The remaining 88% of the villagers neither have any say nor any resources. Therefore, most schemes directed towards the village as a whole or to develop infrastructure only enrich the already powerful. Many development agencies thus unwittingly become instrumental in widening the gap between the rich and the poor. You see, this is the place, the nature cure center, or known popularly as Nishar Gopachar Ashram, from where we started our program. The nature cure goes to the root cause of the disease and never bothers about the symptoms. This principle applies to any developmental program. Therefore, don't treat symptoms. Tackle the root problems. In rural development, we find symptoms. Sim what are the symptoms? Migration is a symptom. Population explosion. High rate of mortality. Illiteracy. Stray cattle. Deforestation. All these are symptoms, but the root cause is poverty. And poverty has come from the main reason that they are drastically underemployed. When people are suffering from chronic unemployment, they cannot escape from the clutches of poverty. It's a vicious cycle. To break this vicious cycle, BAIF has introduced many agro-based programs appropriate to the place and the people. A cardinal principle has been to bring change not by offering relief, but by reconstruction. What is important is not to create jobs, but to create an opportunity for gainful self-employment without uprooting the people from their rural environment. The first step, therefore, is to identify the direction of possible change and suggest suitable action. In this way, the poor are motivated to participate willingly instead of being mere bystanders. 
आणि मिळते तर ती किती रोज मिळतो तुम्हाला त्याच्यातून तुमचं भागत का The entry point holds the key. Projects are introduced after taking into account the socio-economic profile of the family, as well as the advantages and handicaps of the location. In most villages, the urgent need is water. What may appear as a lush green village during the monsoon turns into a dry, barren patch of land in summer. The search for even one pot of drinking water is a tale of endless misery. Trash manje te to vichar na ka ke jashi tumala chachi teva hai. Tashi te amala pani na mila to amala kasai korum pan. Like you city folk crave for a cup of tea. We crave for a glass of water all the time, says a villager. Potable drinking water can be made available by drilling bore wells. But work does not stop there. It is essential to initiate steps to recharge the ground water table. This is done by developing water sheds and establishing percolation tanks. The geographic information systems technique is applied. while planning and implementing water resource development projects acute water scarcity arises not because of lack of rains but due to the combined evils of deforestation and the abuse of available water resources denudation of forest cover has led to soil erosion to conserve precious soil simple and effective technology the a frame can be adopted by the farmer for marking contours presently hardly 25% of rain water is effectively utilized we have to put to use about 75% of rain water to significantly increase the green cover and boost agricultural production watershed development at the micro level offers a better solution Rainwater can even be collected from rooftops to nurture plants and raise kitchen gardens. When water is available throughout the year, there are many roads to prosperity. A decentralized nursery is the basic necessity for a successful afforestation program kisan nurseries promote village level entrepreneurship as well as strengthen the independent earning capacity of women this decentralized nursery managed by women not only developed a sense of cooperation among the participants but also provided millions of saplings to farmers for greening their surroundings khada ke ni magal kothale bhore ta me Once migrant laborers, we are now proud owners of these nurseries, and earn around 1,200 rupees in just three months.
Working with rural families in Urli Kanchan near Pune, way back in the 50s, Manibhai Desai realized that even while agriculture was not profitable, every family traditionally kept at least one cow. Yet, the poor milk yield from the cow actually made it more a burden to feed than an asset. From here sprang an idea. To remove the inherent genetic shortcomings of the local species, the only viable option was to crossbreed the cattle. Theoretically, the requisite technology was already in existence. But the farmer was required to bring his cow to the veterinary dispensary. Given the distance and difficulties involved, the farmer, already diffident, never arrived. This is where BAIF's radically different approach broke new ground. The mobile veterinary doctor, with the container of frozen semen firmly strapped to his motorcycle, has become a common sight. So even if the farmer and his cow could not come to the cattle breeding center, the cattle breeding center could go to their home. He inseminates the cow, meets the family, talks to them of development. He is not working with the cow, he is working with the family. Sakaram is one such proud beneficiary. He came to this village as a migrant labourer. In the beginning, when I came to this village, I had no money. I worked hard and purchased two local cows. I got them inseminated. Now I own two bountiful crossbreds. Like Sakaram, over 600,000 villagers spread over five states of India have improved their livelihood. Along with my household work, I take care of these cows myself. Women find it convenient to manage the crossbreds independently. After I had children, it was difficult for me to pull on as a labourer. I decided to take up dairy cattle activity. The uniqueness of this programme is a family with three to four crossbreds can wipe out poverty and live a decent life. Each crossbred cow yields milk worth about 7,000 rupees per year and the cost of vaccination for each cow is only 21 rupees per year. All development activities have a strong research backup. During an open abdominal operation on a cow, experts study the digestibility of various non-conventional feeds in the rumen. The new formula of highly digestible cattle feed has not only brought down the expenditure on cattle feed, but also avoided competition between dairy farming and food grain production. This has helped even the landless to adopt dairy farming. I was a poor and landless labourer. I found crossbred cows profitable.
cattle require fodder. Trees provide fodder. Promotion of agroforestry, which means planting trees on buns, provides fodder, fuel, timber and even fruit. We get milk and valuable manure which goes into our fields. No more do I have to trek miles to collect firewood. By using dung for biogas, we save fuel wood and produce surplus manure. In short, since everything centers around the land, each scheme is linked to the other by way of forward or backward linkages. BAIF believes in transforming complex technology into simple to understand forms. Why? Because control of knowledge and technology can become another way of exploiting the poor. Therefore, demystification of technology and universalization of technique is the crux of all training. Not only is technology demystified, it is also mastered. The villagers learn to operate and repair the machines. This puts an end to dependence. Wadi is a unique model, wherein a family transforms a strip of wasteland into orchards flanked by forest trees. Over 10,000 tribal families have already established such productive orchards. It is a common experience that when you work for someone else, you work because you have to. When you work for yourself, you work because you want to. You are the master, not the worker, and that makes all the difference. What difference does Kakarpai find in his life by participating in the Wadi program? Yes, there is a lot of difference. I planted forest and fruit trees. I earned from nurseries, from timber, as well as from fruits. A mix of farm and orchard undertakings provides year-long work and guaranteed returns. The yield from my 40 mango trees fetches me around 2,000 rupees a year. The efforts do not stop at production. Villagers are involved in post-harvest handling as well as active marketing of the produce. I deposit the returns in the bank. Today, they are not exploited by traders and middlemen, as was the practice earlier. Earlier, the picture was entirely different. All too often, the depression caused by living in a hopeless situation led the rural poor to drinking. If he drinks, there is no money left to run the home. Therefore, a condition was laid down. Give up liquor to avail of any scheme. And most did. The marginal farmer can never afford to rely on just one crop or one occupation. Therefore, villagers are exposed to many disciplines. Sericulture is one such activity.
Incidentally, since silkworm rearing needs clean surroundings, the family learns to maintain hygiene and cleanliness. The yield from paddy is only once a year, whereas rearing silkworms provides income four times a year. Silkworm rearing keeps the entire family gainfully self-employed. Now I get regular income. Alimbi, he ek burshijanya vanaspati se phala hai. Kya madhe? Mushroom cultivation is a part-time homebound activity. He bharpur pramana tastat. Ata tumala. Mushrooms can be cultivated on organic waste and crop residues. Mushrooms provide additional food security to the rural family. To strengthen formal and informal training, BAIF has established a communication cell and information center. This has ensured the injection of science and the latest technology to the ongoing development programs. Learning and understanding are part of education. Educate the poor and they will find their own road to liberation. But it is a common experience in rural schools that absenteeism and the dropout rate are high. This is because the poor cannot afford to think of school as a priority. Their priority is to earn a livelihood, and each member of the household must contribute. Therefore, literacy programs cannot be taken up in isolation. Education has to be an integral part of the livelihood-related activity. Natural curiosity is channeled into learning. These activities can be popularized very successfully through the involvement of school children. Apart from textbook education, vocational training helps the student become self-reliant and realize that learning is important not for exams alone, but also has a practical gain in real life. The Bhagats, the village healers, could have proved an obstacle in implementing the health program if they had felt threatened. Instead, efforts are made to establish a working relationship with the Bhagats. Tapping of indigenous knowledge and the use of herbal medicines are being encouraged. And the dyes, the traditional midwives, are made aware of the complexities of the anatomy. In this way, they feel involved rather than alienated. They are also encouraged to spread the message of family planning and mother and child health care among women. Experience of the old is blended with the knowledge of the new. Now, dyes and puggets work harmoniously with the doctors to cure villagers. No longer do the villagers rely on the old ways.
Good health and livelihood go hand in hand. Most health problems in the village originate from malnutrition. The main objective of vegetable cultivation is not only to increase the income, but also to enhance the nutritional level of the family. The principles of development are internalized by the people themselves. <laughs> We cultivate these vegetables in groups. After deducting the cost, we distribute the profits amongst ourselves. We have demonstrated that several thousand families can be put to job. And not only job, but remunerative employment at the doorsteps. This is a strategy which can change the whole economy of the country. We design a program creating a decentralized setup, a setup which is small, which is managed by the people and not by some outsider. Injecting managerial skills, building the management ability of the people who are participating in the program so that they take over the management of the developed programs. So by can withdraw. And this is what we say, it is building from below. These strategies ensure the economic upliftment of the rural family while improving the ecosystem and protecting the environment. These strategies are based on a solid foundation. Nothing comes free. There is no charity. You must work gainfully. And work not for others, but for yourself. Technology and skills thus developed can be shared by thousands. It is a model by which non-government organizations can reach out to millions of poor people living in the villages of India. <laughs> 